High Dynamic Range, or HDR for short, can improve the realism of your projects. HDR basically is a filter we are adding to our iClone project, so in essence, it's an atmospheric or camera lens effect. Let me show you a quick diagram to better understand the way light works with our eyes. The computer sees three colors and variations of the colors, red, green, and blue. The normal scale is from 0 to 1, or in iClone's perspective, 0 to 100%. What HDR does is empower those scales to go beyond 1, to create more realistic light in colors which the human eye is more accustomed to. So remembering this scale, 0 to 1, we can look at threshold. If we set threshold at 95, we're going to enhance the brightness of any color that is brighter than 95% of 1. Therefore, if we set threshold to 0, we are enhancing all the brightness of all the colors that are brighter than black, which is basically everything, so we end up with a white out at scene. I'll set my threshold around 90 or so. Bloom scale means I can create light blooming effect based on what colors I'm enhancing in the brightness with the threshold setting. Notice when I move the bloom scale higher, you can see how the light begins to spill over the edges of objects to create a real brightness wash. Bloom scale can also be acted upon by different types of glare effects. I switched to this new example so you can better see the different types of glare effects available. Glare effects is how light will interact with the lens of a camera to create photorealistic effect. After adding in glare effects, you can return back to the bloom settings to fine tune the glare effects. Feel free to use any of these glare effects depending on your project needs. A quick tip though, since glare effects scale can generate keyframes, so keep that in mind if you want to make a sudden glare effect like this one. Tone map is basically turning your iClone into a camera. So let's go ahead and turn on tone map. And the first tool I want to show you is the exposure. Exposure means how much light is placed on an image. If you're old enough to remember those ancient technology called Polaroid cameras, then you can imagine how this works. Imagine a Polaroid with no light. The image will be extremely dark. A Polaroid with more light is more crisper. Exposure is the same way. Underexpose and change the exposure to a low setting, you'll end up with a darker setting in which only bright objects will appear. Overexpose and bright objects will appear extremely bright. Usually a setting around 70 or 80 is ideal. Gaussian scale basically fine tunes the light generated by the setting you have for your exposure. To better understand this, I'll show an example in Photoshop. Here I have a white spot with a Gaussian scale. If I push the scale to a lower setting, I make the white spot seem sharper. If I move the other direction, you can see the spot blurs out and softening the impact of the white spot. The same concept applies to our iClone Gaussian scale. The lower the setting, the sharper the light from the exposure. Higher the scale, the more soft and dispersed the light is from our exposure setting. The last tool is adaptation speed, which basically is treating iClone like the human eye. Imagine if you're in a dark room for 20 minutes, suddenly someone turns on the bright floodlights, the instant reaction is, wow, too bright! You will close your eyes until your eyes have adapted to the light. This tool is similar in concept. To demonstrate this, the setting for adaptation speed is set to low. When I press play, watch the white ball in the middle. Did you notice it? The light slowly moved across the ball, but since adaptation speed was set to low, the effect was not so obvious. Let's do the same thing, but this time, change the adaptation speed to very high. There, did you see it? The light quickly moved across the ball, and the camera adapted quickly so we could easily see and notice the change. The setting for adaptation is purely for your preference. Just play around with the settings until you have the exact effect you want. A quick tip though, since the calculation for adaptation speed can only be viewed during play, you can only see the effect after pressing the play button. Now my adaptation speed is set to low, but notice if I stop the video here, you'll see the ball becomes bright again. That's because the real-time function of iClone adaptation is always set to high. But if I press play again, you can see the adaptation speed is being calculated again. Okay, that's the basics of HDR and IBL. I know it was a lot of information, but I think with a little practice and experimentation, you'll be able to create beautiful scenes with IBL and HDR atmospheres.